take away from the hustling and bustling of work. Some people have taken the opportunity of the Easter break to catch up with the lost moments from their families and loved ones. We are here for Easter picnic, as you can see. Since Easter is a festive period for every one of us, here in Ogu State, we think we should come visit this beautiful place. Today is like the last day of the holiday, yeah, yeah. so I brought family out to just chill out for today. Most of the fun places visited were filled up with people from within and out of Abelkuta, as both young and old had the best time of their lives. It's fun. I learned some more things about the Rock. It's a nice time. Of course, we are celebrating Jesus, isn't it? And he's the Lord of our life. And it means so much to me and so much to us. So it's a very special moment for me. Easter Monday is a time to celebrate the ascension of Jesus Christ. And a few persons take no chances in appreciating their creator for gifting the Christians Jesus Christ. I can say this is the fulfillment uh, of the promise of God for the humankind. Uh, Easter is Monday. According to the Bible, like we have it, that when Jesus rose up on the third day, so on Monday, that which is the next day, they went to meet him at Galilee. So they kind of coming together, having a picnic and uh, with your family, friends. Elder Shola Adeyemi also emphasizes on the essence of Easter and why Christians should emulate the Messiah. We are to win souls for Christ. And at the end of the day, God has promised that those who win souls will have additional stars on their crown when they get to heaven. So I implore Christians by their way of life, by their living standards, to preach Christ with their lives. It's re-energizing to take them out to unwind with families and friends. And this season is not an exception. People had so much fun and never wanted the holiday to end. I want to continue. To continue. So yeah. But every beginning most surely has an end. Oduayo Oriyeni, OGTV News. Away from Easter celebrations, the economic development strategy of the current administration in Ogun State is to achieve a job-led growth that would be domesticated for the benefit of the people. The State Commissioner for Finance and Chief Economic Advisor, Dakbo Okubadijo, and his counterpart in the Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment, Mrs. Kike Lomolunge, made us known while reacting to the recent signing of $400 million MOU between Auguste Government and Arise Integrated Platform. In line with uh, His Excellency's vision and also a very proactive strategy of creating six different economic development clusters, um, we believe that this is the only way, you know, to be able to achieve the, com the cost competitiveness of industries, particularly during the uh, recently um, signed Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement, which makes Africa a single market, a single economic block. And so we need to continuously drive down cost of production here. And so by setting up a cluster with baseline infrastructure and getting the expertise and the financing and the capital from a for eyes, uh, we, you know, we have really achieved a lot of things. In fact, it demonstrates the attractiveness of Ogun State as that preferred investor's de destination of choice. We're bringing in an investor that is going to attract all manner of investment, create jobs, and strengthen the value chain, especially in the agro-processing area, where we have been focusing a lot of, you know, we produce a lot of primary agriculture. Just adding value, processing it to the next level to be able to get more value, more money, empower our farmers and people in the agricultural value chain some more. Mr. Okupa Dejo further reiterated that any country can achieve economic growth, but that growth must be domesticated. It is to achieve a job-led growth. It's not just about growth. Any country can achieve economic growth, but that growth has to be domesticated. We want our people to be the direct beneficiaries of this growth. So that's why our strategy of job-led growth is very paramount. And we're very excited that Arise is 
clearly aligned with this objective, you know, of 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 uh, operating a, a a sustainable investment strategy, and that's why we're very excited about uh, Harais. He also said the current administration will continue to do all that is necessary towards building a sustainable economic development in the state. Committed to ensuring accountability and transparency with a view to giving value for money in the running of government business, the Udo State House of Assembly will on Tuesday 19th April 2022 commence this year's budget performance assessment for the first quarter on the various ministries, departments and agencies, MDAs of government, as well as local government councils in the state. A statement by the clerk of the assembly and head of legislative service, Mr. DG Adeyemo, noted that the annual exercise, which is part of the oversight function of the legislative arm of government in entrenching good governors, was in line with sections 128 and 129 of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended. The statement added that the exercise, which is meant to access and ascertain the level of compliance by the MDAs with the 2022 appropriation law, as well as ensure effective and efficient service delivery to the people, would commence at 10 in the morning daily and end on Friday, 29th April 2022. The statement therefore enjoined all ministries, departments and agencies of government, as well as local government councils, to make available all relevant documents and information to the lawmakers for the success of the exercise. The management of the Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board, JAMP, has expressed optimism for each free examination scheduled for May. The board, in its weekly bulletin of the Office of the Registrar on Monday in Abuja, said that it will deliver a seamless exercise in its May examination in all its 757 centers across the country. JAMP had scheduled the 2022 Unified Tertiary Matriculation Examination, UTME, to hold between May 6 and May, 9, May 16. This, it said, followed the success recorded in the mock UTME, which was held on Saturday, April 9. The registrar, Professor Isha Kuloyede, stated that the board is ready to deliver the most seamless examination ever come May. The statement also quoted registrar as advising proprietors of computer-based test CBT centers nationwide not to rest on their oaths but consolidate on the successes recorded in the mock exercise. Oloyede added that the centers must deliver on a better outcome in the main examination in May. He reiterated that the mock examination was instituted to principally test its facilities and ascertain its readiness for the main UTME. And from Lagos State, the government has shut down all Christland schools in Lagos State indefinitely. This followed a controversy generated over an immoral act engaged in by students of the school during a trip to Dubai. The shutdown notice was contained in a press statement on Monday. According to reports, pupils from the elite private school located in Victoria Garden City had embarked on a trip to Dubai to participate in the World School Games between March 10 and 13, 2022, when the incident happened. The Nigerian Senate has berated a former Deputy Senate leader, Abdul Ahmed Mingi, for alleging that the National Assembly was too soft on national issues, a development that makes President Muhammadu Buhari get involved in wrongdoings. The Senate expressed surprise that such a comment could come from a ranking senator and former principal officer in the upper legislative chamber. A statement by the Senate spokesperson, Ajibola Bashiro, condemned the remarks by Senator Ningi, saying the Ninth Assembly has been too soft on both national issues and President Muhammadu Buhari on some alleged wrongdoings that he said are detrimental to good governance. The statement reminded the former lawmaker that the Senate was not an opposition constituted to antagonize other arms of government. And still to come in the news, windstorms destroy 463 houses in Cross River State. We'll bring you the details here at times. 
there is need for the federal government to urgently channel its efforts at attaining a genuine reconciliation of all grievances if the 2023 general elections being threatened by insecurity must be hit free. Thus, the submission of stakeholders while examining the increasing rate of insecurity in the nation, especially in the southeastern part of the country. Margaret Okunlola has the details. As the 2023 general elections are fast approaching, aspirants from various political parties are emerging in numbers to compete for limited spaces. This is democracy in action. There is increasing threat to the general polls as well. Due to increasing waves of insecurity and climate of violence, agitation for secession by some parts of the country, and insistence by many groups and leaders that the country must be restructured with physical and other powers devolved to the federating units. A vivid example is the persistent unrest in the southeastern part of the country. This leaves Nigerians pondering on whether aspirants out in their numbers have ever stopped to assess the threat posed by insecurity to their 2023 ambitions. There are the only grievances that government needs to attend to, and there are also actions of criminals who hijack situation to carry out mayhem. Government should address genuine concerns of the people and the security agencies should be at alert and nip um, unnecessary bloodletting and uh, killing of people in the board. From section 134, subsection 1, paragraph B of the Electoral Act 2022, Barista Kayode Aderemi inferred that constitutionally no group of people has the power to stop the polls advising that instead of taking to arms and threats, dialogue should be encouraged by the government. Section 134, to start with, of the new Electoral Act, uh, subsection 1, paragraph B, states that um, for the post of a president, a person shall be declared president, it lists several things. But 1B says that if he wins a quarter of all the votes cast in two-thirds of all the states, so it doesn't that's what that means even if 10 people vote in a the state they will count and declare winner all right for that state all right so it's still gonna go on anyway but what i think can be done and for what should be done is to listen to agitation in nigeria oftentimes the government in most cases do not listen until the people get them um, pushed pressed to the wall and they get to kind of fight back eddie i know a 72-year-old veteran journalist with over 40 years' wealth of experience is not too far from the suggestion given earlier. He took a cue from the 2015 elections in the Northeast to express that the Constitution does not make a provision for no election. Therefore, government will do all in its capacity to conduct the polls. On his part, he called for the setup of a Truth and Reconciliation Committee. Nobody can threaten government from having election. Government has the force, the monopoly of instruments, you know, to use to ensure that that election takes place. They should leverage on the Truth and Reconciliation uh, Committee set up by Soludo. Because he said, already said that he's going to bring in the uh, five governors of Eastern State. He's going to bring in the federal government. And if you look at that tripartite agreement, I'm sure it will, it's going to work magic. Respondents all vividly expressed displeasure on the rising cases of insecurity in the society, calling on governments to listen to agitations of the people, since a better chunk of the unrest is caused by ignored requests in all sectors. Margaret Okunola, OGTV News. Three-time member of the House of Representatives representing Yewa Ipokea Yewa South Federal Constituency and 2023 Ogun West Senatorial State Hopeful Honorable Abiodun Isha Kakilade has affirmed that the selection of candidates by the All Progressive Congress APC for political offices in the zone must be issue based and conducted on level playing field. Honorable Akinlade made this known while addressing supporters, party faithful, and stakeholders while officially presenting his letter of intent and offering himself for the senatorial seat of Ogun West at the Ipokia local government held at the community hall. Massive show me complete the report. Having impacted on his constituency 
and on the lives of the people through consistency projects, sponsoring of bills, provision of employment for the youths during his three-term tenure at the House of Representatives and as Commissioner in the Federal Character Commission. Honorable Abiodu Isiak Akiladi is offering himself to serve Ogun West at the Senate. It is the turn of the government for the declaration of its intention to change the narrative of quality representation and bring about the needed change in the Ogun West Senatorial District and supporters, faithful and stakeholders of the All Progressive Congress in the Pokialuku government area trooped out to receive Honorable Abiodun Isiak Akinladi as he presents his letter of intent to the chairman of the party as the first to do so. The Pokialuku government is more or less like my second home. Uh, my last 12 years mandate, House of Reps, confer the Pokialuku government and I did not disappoint them. If you give me the mandate to represent them again at the Senate, I promise to give them a good representation. Honorable Akinladi said the experience garnered over the years while serving as a representative of the people and good understanding of the challenges of the districts have placed him in a vantage position to grab the tickets of APC in the zone. Honorable Akinladi asked for the support of the people as he admonished them to place the overall interest of the zone above any immediate pecuniary and financial gains in taking the decision on who will represent Ogun West in the coming elections. 16 years National Assembly. I understand the language, the networking, and everything that I can use to bring the best of democracy to the people of Ogun West. Chairman of APC in the Pokialuku government, Honorable Taiwo Wekotoji, said the record of achievements of the Honorable is there to speak for him. APC stalwarts in the local government area described the choice of Honorable Akladi as the best for the senatorial district at this time. Honorable Akladi is our man. He has been uh, with us since uh, almost 16 years now, and he has never disappointed us. I will advise the people to support Honorable Akinladi because of his love for the people and to fulfill all his vision for the zone. It was a testimony time as beneficiaries of employment opportunities provided by Honorable Akinladi came out one after the other to show their appreciation. Matthew Shoumi, OGTV News. The Minister of Labor and Employment, Chris Ngigi, has joined the race for the presidential seat. His media office stated that the minister had been consulting stakeholders in his All Progressive Congress APC party, as well as towards of, of opposition political parties. He is scheduled to publicly declare his attention on April 19, the media office stated. The newly installed exact Christian chiefs have been urged to see the new positions as a call to service and not to be served. The Alake and Paramount ruler with the land over Dr. Adetosunwaremungadebo gave the church during an homage to his palace by the seven installed exact chiefs. Adebola Oshomoji has the details. To further propagate the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Egba Christian chiefs bestowed chieftaincy title to seven of its members at Ake Palace at Beokuta. Under the leadership of the Balogun Onigba Boegba, Chief Joseph Babatunde Oke. During the installation ceremony, the chiefs were individually handed over Bible as well as the constitution of the council as they were admonished to uphold the tenets of Christianity. They were made to take oath that they are not part of secret court and that they will never be and that if they be, over to God. Earlier in his sermon, Venerable Dr. Sunday Abodunri stressed that genuine Christians should see themselves as shining lights to others. Chief Babatunde Oke pointed out that Egba Christian Chiefs Council is not for rituals. These chiefs today, 
are different from chiefs from township. These are Egba chiefs, uh -huh. and they have a right to spread the gospel throughout Egba land. The Egba Christian chiefs thereafter paid homage to the Alake and paramount ruler of Egba land, Oba Adedotun Aremu Badebo. The monarch congratulated them and admonished them to be good team player in propagating Christianity in Egba land and beyond. <laughs> He also encouraged them to be up to task in their new positions and avoid any acts that can tarnish completing the project because of the manifold economic benefits it would bring to the nation. The brass LNG, which has trained for one to four concepts with an annual projected capacity of 8.4 million metric tons. The World Bank says increasing fraud subsidy puts the Nigerian economy at a high risk as subsidy payments could significantly impact public finance and post debt sustainability concerns. The Washington-based lender said this in the new biannual report known as Africans Plus. According to the bank, Nigeria is projected to have a 3.8 percent growth in 2022, adding that as an oil-dependent country, weak oil production and past economic recovery. It added that the increase in fuel subsidy poses a high risk to the country's economic growth, despite the increase in oil prices. The Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, said the consumer credit rose 40 percent year-on-year to 2.1 trillion naira in November last year, from 1.5 trillion naira in November 2020, driven by a rise in the tempo of economic activities. CBN disclosed this in the just-released economic report for November 2021, adding that consumer credit accounted for 8.9 percent of the total credit to the private sector of the at the end of the month, the report stated consumers' credit outstanding increased owing to an increase in the tempo of economic activities. Total consumer credit extended by the other depository corporations grew by 4.3% to 2.1 trillion naira from 2 trillion naira at the end of October. This value represents 8.9% of the total credit to the private sector in the month compared with 8.7% in the preceding month. The 36 states of the Federation have warned the federal government not to tamper with funds accruing to them and the 774 local government councils under the guise of satisfying an alleged $418 million London Paris Club loan refund related judgment debts. In documents received by journalists, the state said they were not parties to any suits in the London Paris Club refund and as such were not liable to any person or entity in any judgment debt being ruled on by the federal government. Speaking through the body of Attorney General of the Federation, the states warned further that should the federal government proceed to make any such deduction, it would be acting illegally and in contempt of the appeal challenging the judgment. The Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, has restated its commitment to ensuring that the nation's capital market attains its full potential through advanced technology. Director General of SEC, Lamido Yuguda, stated this during a meeting with the management team of financial sector Deepening Africa, FSD Africa Support Centers on the Development of Capital Markets Master Plan, conducting institutional capacity assessment and creating capacity for sustainable finance, such as green bonds, helping markets to adapt to their operating goals. Yogoda expressed the Commission's delight for the support from FSD Africa in the areas of human resources, transformation, information technology strategy, as well as capital market master plan review. Nigeria Exchange Limited has launched West African first exchange traded directives market with equity index future contracts. It said in a statement that this was consistent with the exchange's commitment to develop the Nigerian capital market by providing a market that thrived on innovation and responded to the needs of stakeholders in assessing and using capitals. 
the launch of NGS ETD market saw the listing of two equity index futures contracts, NGS 30 index futures and NGS pension index futures, with more securities to be added in the future, the statement said. To promote clearing efficiency, stability, and confidence, the exchange said it had collaborated with a premier central counterparty, a Nigeria NG Clearing Limited, to provide the clearing infrastructure for NGS derivatives markets and its clearing members. And that brings us to the end of the business segment of the news. We now go back to Bukola for the rest of the news.